It's one of the places that still offers a challenge to man. The underwater world of the frogmen, the skin divers and submariners. A silent, mysterious world where only the fittest have so far learned to survive and find their way about, so often on the grim errands of war. Under the oceans, progress is measured in fathom depths and by man's endurance. The submarine of today can penetrate to twice the depth of its predecessors of only 20 years ago on a safe, sure route through the canyons and valleys of the ocean floor. And the latest generation of subs, nuclear powered, are built to operate at vast depths at speeds of around 40 to 50 miles an hour. This is the keel of one of them, the second of Britain's Polaris missile subs that can lurk submerged for weeks on end and cross thousands of miles of ocean. Even while this new sub is still being made, man's underwater conquest will grow. For these workers have years of work ahead of them on this giant in the Birkenhead shipyard. Even in this little Swiss alpine town far from the sea and miles from the nearest navigable water, they've caught the excitement of the underwater world. Here at Monte, they're building a sub with a difference, a sub that could open up the oceans to everyone. It's called the Messerscaff. Supervising its construction and talking here to the British travel writer Bob Danvers Walker is an underwater pioneer with a famous name. He's Dr. Jacques Picard, son of Professor Auguste Picard. The craft takes just over a year to build, but behind it is the experience of two generations of Picards in undersea exploration that led to the renowned Bathyscaphs, one of which went down seven miles into the Pacific in 1960. And now, the Messerscaph, a 160-tonner with a two-fold mission to take scientists, marine biologists among them, down into sea areas till now the preserve of submariners and frogmen, and also to open up the depths of the oceans to fair-paying tourists. It's one thing to make your mesoscaf in Monte, quite another to get it to the water. For the Swiss railwaymen, this is one of the trickiest jobs they've ever had. The 10-mile trip takes 12 hours through the night. This road and rail bridge got in the way, so they jacked it up six inches. A touch is as good as a disaster when you're handling a unique piece of precision engineering like this. But there's just enough clearance. The Messerscaf's superstructure is being carried in a freight van for assembly at the launch site at Bouveret. It's an anxious moment for Dr. Picard and his team of engineers and technicians. Picard was on that record-breaking dive in the Pacific, but the Marianas Deep had nothing on this bridge for suspense. And at Bouveret, it's a launching in the best traditional style of the maritime nations. And where more appropriate to launch a sub with such a peaceful mission as the Messerscaffs than Lake Geneva, the 200 odd square mile stretch of water that cools the city of peace. Here, the new 90 foot sub will show her paces. Here, she'll undergo her diving tests when every detail about her will be checked and rechecked and her appearance is planned to coincide with a Swiss national exhibition here at Lausanne, a few miles along the shore from Geneva. And now, who's for a trip under the lake? Each of the 40 passengers must be weighed. Fully loaded, with a full complement of crew and passengers, she'll still be lighter than water, and there's a seat for everyone. Designed for what her sponsors call medium depth exploration, the Messerscaf can dive to nearly 4,000 feet. But on Lake Geneva, the maximum depth is around 1,000 feet. And something short of that will be quite enough for many a tripper going underwater for the first time in his life.
The Mrs. Cass safety standards are high. She does a reassuring five knots, and before the trip, several tons of ballast, water, and scrap iron have been added to give her a specific weight only just lighter than would be enough to sink her. She submerges only from the propulsion of her motors and when the control fins are adjusted to the proper angle. If the engine stops, she'll surface automatically. If the electrical system fails, the current will be shut off, the iron ballast will be jettisoned and she'll rise to the surface. Every passenger his own porthole, and every porthole's view of the depths is illuminated by spotlight. On the keel are floodlights to show up the water landscapes below. And spread through the cabin, 10 TV screens relay a pilot's eye view of the lake from a camera on the roof of the sub's bridge. With her oxygen reserve tank and special apparatus for the absorption of bad air, she could stay underwater for two whole days, but not this time. Imagine what would happen if one of these were to be seen emerging from Loch Ness. And how long before somebody catches on to the idea of shilling a time dives in search of the notorious old monster. Well, they've seen no monsters, but they've seen enough to keep them talking for days. There seems to be no limit to this underwater lark as this sports store in London's West End has realised. You want to be your own submariner, sir? Certainly, sir. This way. She'll carry you down among the fish and the sea gardens at a steady six knots. She's battery-driven and can dive to around 100 feet. And she costs 885 pounds. Hmm. Bit of a squeeze, old boy. In the cockpit, there's enough oxygen for three hours underwater. On the instrument panel, you can see how your oxygen supply is doing, your depth and attitude in the water. And there's a built-in system that automatically limits the diving depth. Well, he'll think about it. It's one way of getting away from all those crowds on the beaches, to say nothing of beating the rush hour. One of these days, maybe, he'll move house and home, commute to the city down the Thames, and have his own submarine pen at Tower Bridge. Until, that is, the place gets jammed with one-man submarines. Well, it's a thought, and he knows a thing or two about conning towers already.